Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to Intro to Programming, video number six. Today we're going to learn two very easy concepts, but at the same time they're also very essential. In the past we have been calling functions like console.readline and writeline, but today I want to show you guys how to write your own functions. We'll write a basic function that will multiply two numbers together, we'll call that function, and then after that I'm going to show you guys how to debug your code, which debugging means you set a breakpoint and then you can walk through your code line by line and see what's going on as your program runs. You can see what the values of numbers are. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump on in. I've already generated a blank Windows console application. After the curly brackets of this main function, I'm going to press enter a few times and here we can write our very first function. Before we write the name of our function, we have to specify a few keywords. The first one is static, and static basically means that this function will be in memory at all times during the program's runtime. Whenever we write functions in Windows console applications, to my knowledge, they always have to be static. But when we write other programs in the future, we can use different keywords besides static. You don't have to make those functions static, but for now we do. The next keyword, we will type void. And void is the returning value of this function. So if this function just runs and returns nothing, we would say this is a void function. However, if we want our function to return something, like a number, or uh, maybe some text, remember console.readline returns text, we can specify different types of return values. It can be bool, int, string, all types of stuff. Since we're trying to write a function that returns two numbers that have been multiplied together, let's make this an int return value instead. The next thing we have to type is the name of our function. So I'm going to keep it simple and say multiply numbers. Here we can type open and close parentheses and inside the parentheses we can define what type of parameters we want to be passed in to this function. So technically you could have nothing if you don't want any parameters passed in. But we do want a few parameters passed in because we're trying to multiply two numbers so we need to know what those two numbers are. So I'm going to say int a and comma and after the comma we can type in our second parameter we want passed in. We want int b so basically two numbers a and b. You can keep going for as long as you want by the way. You, you, could, t you could pass in a string, you could pass in a bool, and uh, you could have as many as you want basically. I'm just trying to show you as an example here, but for this example, let's just use two ints. Then you want to press enter and add in your two curly brackets. And notice we already have an error. We have the red squiggly line. And Visual Studio is saying not all code paths return a value. And that's because when we make a function that is not void, right, so if we have a function that is returning an int, a string, if it's returning anything at all, we have to return something to please Visual Studio, even if it's uh, zero. See, if we go back up here and say return zero, look, the error goes away because now we're actually returning a number. So we don't want to return zero, though. We want to return the result of two numbers, A and B, being multiplied together. So let's do that. Return a times b. Um, but let's go ahead and go back up here and actually use this function. So if you remember on the last episode, we made a new object using the random class, and that let us use a random number generator to generate some random numbers. So let's go ahead and do that again. And I'm going to make a couple of ints for demonstration purposes here. I'm going to make int a, 
equal to random dot next zero one thousand so this will return a random number between zero and nine hundred and ninety nine let's make another number that does the same thing another random number and then finally I'm going to make a, a result int that stores what is coming back from our function so here we just call our function like we've called every other function in the past we just type multiply numbers parentheses oh, okay look the IntelliSense says multiply numbers returns int see the int before the function name and the parameters it's asking for is int a and int b and we have two ints we can pass in for this a and b and finally let's write the result to the console and then wait for a wait for some input before we exit okay I'm going to press F5 and see what the result is on the screen alright and there it is we have the result of 151,636 so wouldn't it be cool to know what numbers are being multiplied together to get this result now I know technically we could just print <laughs> everything uh, to the console window we could say print a print B and then print the result and we could see and that's actually one way of debugging you know back in the day before we had these really nice debugging tools that I'm about to show you that let us step through our code basically programmers would use the console dot write line to write the values of numbers <laughs> to the console window so they could see what the values of things were to debug the problems so uh, yeah that is one way to debug but we're going to actually set a breakpoint and walk through our code so let me show you how to do that you need to go over here into this side of the Visual Studio window and click once you click in this little bar here you should see a red dot come up if you want the red dot to go away you just click it again okay and what this is doing is whenever our program is running and hits this line of code that we have put the red dot on which correlates with the random line here Visual Studio will stop running the program it will pause it it will go into code view and let us walk through each line of code as it executes so let's go ahead and do that let's press F5 okay and see the bar here the highlight turned yellow that means we're actively stepping through it you can also see down here in the locals window we have the local variables that we're currently working with and Visual Studio is showing us the value of all these variables so A is currently 0, B is currently 0, result is currently 0 mm -hmm. and random see here is currently set to null and an object is null when it's nothing, when it's set to nothing. But you'll see here after we execute this first line of code, random equals new random, so we're creating a new instance of random, and you should see random turn into something else besides a null. So let's let's watch. I'm going to hit F10. Okay. We've moved into the next line of code. The locals window shows us that there's something here now in the random line. It's not just null and now let's go ahead and press F10 one more time to go through the A line okay and see down here in the locals window A is 784 now we can go back up and actually highlight we can put our cursor over A or any type of variable and see what is inside of it so see here it says A is 784 B is 0 result is 0 let's press F10 again now B is set to 32 and now we're going to go into our multiply numbers function but notice I've been saying press F10 and F10 takes us one line at a time so the kind of red flag about that is if we pressed F10 right now we wouldn't actually go into the function multiply numbers we would skip over that function and get the result hopefully that makes sense 
we'll use f11 if we want to go inside of a function call and see what goes on inside of the function. So, le so let's press f11 and see now we're inside of the multiply numbers function. Let's press f11 again and now we're on the return a times b line. a is 784 and b is 32 just like we expected it to be. Let's press f11 again, f11 again, okay. Result is still zero. And so let's press F10 now. And now result is 25,088. And press F10. Now we've written something to the console. Press F10. And that's all we can walk through right now because now we're waiting for input from the player. So that's the basics of debugging. And when you're working with smaller programs like this, maybe it seems a little silly to do this. Um, but when we start doing full-on, more complicated video games, this is very helpful at times when you get these weird bugs that you're not sure where exactly they're coming from. You can walk through your code like this and figure things out pretty easily. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a few things, and I'll see you guys on Episode 7.